This is so fun. This is way different than the... How many people by a round of applause were at the other Super Serious show? That was a fun one, too. That was all white, you know? The big problem there is uh, the last person to leave every show, we kill them. Uh, Each of us with a pen knife. We all attack them at once. And whoever can cut out their heart gets to headline the next show. And it was just all white, so there was no way you could do that without blood stains. Here, forget it. We can really do it. Has anyone talked about this ominous part of the show? People have talked about it? What'd they say? Fuck waxing? I'll do it later. I don't believe that that was ever said. And if it was, it wasn't said the way you said it. You said it as if it was one word. Fuck waxing. If it was ever said, it was an exclamation. Fuck waxing. I shave. Isn't this, this looks like a guy that you don't want to walk into your dark living room and find. That's about the worst way to come home. You just walk in after a tough day at work. You've been fighting with your girlfriend because you didn't buy kale, you bought spinach. (laughs) Close the door behind you, lock it, and there's just a man right here. A shadowy figure. Maybe he's smoking, not a cigarette, but just his body is smoking. (laughs) Hello, Daryl. And then you're like, my name is TJ. He's like, what's the least awkward way for me to leave? (laughs) And why don't you have a lampshade? You can afford such a huge grand piano, but you can't buy a fucking lampshade? It's because you're blowing all your money on grand pianos. It is weird this doesn't have a lampshade. I guess it's the look of poverty. (laughs) It's the right neighborhood for it, though. When I was eating over at the pupuseria next door with two Salvadorian men who were trying to speak English and their hands were covered in white paint, I thought, I gotta stop talking to you and go to a weirdly decorated hipster club hidden next to your pupuseria. What's that? You can't afford new electrical outlets for the bathroom? Well, if you ever happen your way into whatever this place is called, you should tickle the ivories on our $50,000 piano. Anyway, rent's cheap here, as you can see, but, you know, they don't have a ton of money because they stopped right above, right there. They didn't... They just ran out of red paint, didn't they? Are you sure you got enough for the ceiling? Yeah! Okay? I did! Stop asking me, Jerry! I'm just saying, if you don't have enough, then we won't be... Yeah, I got it! Okay? Jesus! And he gets back and he gets to that level and he's like, Fuck! Wait till Jerry gets back. I'll never hear the end of this. And Jerry comes back. He's like, buddy, I told you. What? You told me what? You told me so? Well, you were right about Debbie leaving me, and you're right about this. Weird skylight system they have in place. Just three totally dirt-covered pieces of glass. But this is a weird one, huh? This, this kind of looks like a, uh, like if somebody was like a kind of a 70s, you know, the beads and the, uh-oh. 
Looks like they put me on a riffing leash. <laughs> okay, I'll come back and do material. <laughs> This character, this is a, uh, <laughs> this is a frat guy who's giving a eulogy. <sighs> Melissa was the best. <laughs> <laughs> she was a really cool and good person. <laughs> She always said that society put us in our respective boxes, that we were restricted by what people thought we should be rather than what we were. <laughs> the cool thing about Melissa was, she always said her box was big enough for everybody. <laughs> That's what she said. That's what she said. Now do I get a little more, huh? <laughs> Thank you. This to me looks like... <laughs> like, you know the 70s beads? You know when you go over to someone's house? Or like someone's boyfriend's place or something? And you get there and like, <laughs> you're in the living room and you're like, this place is cool. And then they enter through those shitty 70s beads. <laughs> and act like it's cool, act like it's not weird and archaic. They're just like, hey, what's up? How you doing? Can I get you a bubble tea? I make them fresh over here in the piano room. But it's, so this looks like the weirdest. I just imagine there was a point that Thomas Edison was so fucking high on coke. He was like, I'm redoing the whole place. I need to invent stylishly! <laughs> and he put on the gramophone, which he invented. <laughs> I don't care what you guys fucking say. Let me just put these in. But early on in electricity, as many of you know, just like umbrella technology, it was really quite dangerous. <laughs> so my, my image, you know, I think you guys all saw this when I first came up here and kind of mentioned these things. First thing that came to my mind is the image of a totally high on cocaine Thomas Edison <laughs> after having just put all these weird light bulbs in, which look amazing at that point. Because no one ever seen a light bulb, much less a bunch of them hanging from the ceiling for no reason. <laughs> so his wife came in and she's like, Thomas! I made you whatever food is appropriate and customary during the time we were alive. <laughs> Probably sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> then she's like, oh my God, look at all those beautiful lights. And then she remembers why she was so in love with him, you know, because he was a brilliant mind and although he's constantly in the garage working, she does. She loves his mind and his drive and his ambition. And then, uh... <laughs> Please, don't interrupt this. It's very important. <laughs> she comes in. She sees the lighting display. She's just like, oh, my God. I do. I love this man. And he, even though he's so high on coke so often. <laughs> and then he just coked up. He was the first... He also invented that move where you go through and kind of go, hey, what's up? You know? That was originally Thomas Edison, so I just imagine him early on in the development. No, no. <laughs> By the way, if this riff doesn't go well, they'll just rip, this will go around my ankle and they'll pull me down and out. <laughs> I just imagine, you know, she has that sort of love-struck feeling again. She's reminded of their past and how they came to be. Not only lovers, but a partnership. <laughs> and he's all excited because he's going to come through and make love to her, you know. But the, uh, 
The wiring is faulty on several of the light bulbs. Because he had to make them all, you know? So he just comes through trying to be smooth, and he's like, Hey! Do you like what I made? Anyway, that's what I thought when I first came. Good night, thank you.